It is the Savage Nation. Chick-fil-A spokesman dies suddenly. You know, I don't even know what Chick-fil-A is, but apparently the godfather of uh, Chicago has taken umbrage with this uh, chicken chain for reasons I don't even know, but the poor chief spokesman dropped dead of a heart attack today. Nice man, middle-aged man, wife, three sons, grandchild, dies of a heart attack. Whatever happened to free speech? What did the chicken fillet stand do or a company that made the godfather of Rahm Emanuel condemn them from the podium of the uh, mayorship of Chicago? I don't even know what he said. Listen what else is going on in your insane country under Obama. Because of the meanness, because of the intolerance, because of the viciousness of the psychopaths on the left, here's a question for you. Do crosses at Catholic University violate the human rights of Muslims? Now, such a question on the face of it is insane. But Muslims are saying a cross at a Catholic university, university violates their human rights. Who do you think put that in the Muslims' heads? The ACLU. Air Force removes God from logo. Obama leaves God out of Thanksgiving address. School removes God from song. Rahm Emanuel says Chick-fil-A values are not Chicago value, values. Anti-bullying speaker, you know what they are, the most bullying people on the planet. Anti-bullying speaker curses Christian teens. And finally today, elderly woman told she can't fly the American flag. Is this the country that you want to live in? Is this the country that you think your ancestors fought for? Is this what this has come to, that violent left-wing psychopaths have destroyed freedom of speech? And I'm supposed to focus on the Olympics. The Summer Olympics take place every four years. Do you care about the Olympics? Will you watch or tune out? I mean, I'm sure at some point I'll see somebody doing something. I'm not one of these people waiting to see it. I, I, is anyone waiting for the Olympics and why? How many Olympics can we watch in our lifetime? It's like elections by now. They seem to go on at all times, 24-7. There's always an election going on. There's always a circus going on. Are the Olympics anything more than a massive international circus? Meant to distract the public while the leftist global elite keeps feeding at the trough and stealing our rights? It's unbelievable to me. There are a lot of other stories. I mean, we haven't yet dropped the sewer pipe of Hollywood, which has twisted our culture uh, in, into pretzels. Yesterday was the epitome of it when Harvey Weinstein calls for gun control. And I said, what we need is Weinstein control, not gun control. Symbol shot. I mean, I think that we need Spielberg control, not gun control. I think, there you go. I think we need Weinstein control, not gun control. Yes, now you got it. I think we need sewer pipe uh, cleaning instead of gun control. All right, well, I think we made the point. Uh, it's just been revealed that the Colorado mass murderer was seeing a, a, a university psychiatrist pre prior to the shooting. Now, who do you blame? The shrink? I can't blame the shrink. Their profession is given over to total acceptance and total tolerance. You have to understand the mindset of a shrink. Anyone in the, in the healing professions, meaning psychiatrists, psychologists, lay therapists, therapists, whatever, their entire field is given over to non-judgmentalism. So if a guy comes in and says, oh, I'm having fantasies about shooting up a movie theater and killing people, she'll ask him if, a, if his father exposed himself to him when he was two years old. Well, he'll say, did, did your mother do something to you? Uh, come back in three, well, let's say I'll see you for three. I have three sessions. Of, uh, come back in two months. They make no value judgments. The whole society has been taken out of the church and into the psychiatrist chair, which is why we've fallen apart. See, when there are no values, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, etc., then anything is possible, and then we have America today. And, of course, that's why we're living through this psychosis that we have today where a Muslim would have the nerve, the audacity to attend the Catholic University and say that the cross violates my human rights. 1-800-449-8255. Chick-fil-A spokesman dies of a heart attack. The president of Chick-fil-A exercises his constitutional rights. He expresses views an overwhelming majority of Americans have upheld at the ballot box, by the way. See, every state that has put on the ballot 
gay marriage. Gay marriage has been knocked down in, I think, it's 17 states. So this guy expresses his opinion, and suddenly the mayor of Chicago says he's an anti-American. And the poor spokesman who probably, no one ever heard of Chick-fil-A before this, except people who eat there. If there was one here, I'd go, I'd go try the chicken now. Uh, is, it a, is there a difference between one chicken stand and another? I personally eat a lot of chicken. I don't like this stuff, but it's the only thing available in supermarkets that I can generally eat that's hot. Safeway has a good chicken. The local market has a bad chicken. Safeway has a for five, six bucks. You know, if you're hungry, you go into a Safeway, you get a hot chicken. You get a potato, you got a dinner. What more do you need? Unbelievable. What's this over the chicken thing, Chick-fil-A? The guy probably never had such pressure in his life. If he lived one minute in my shoes, he would have been dead at 13. I'm glad that he never had to face what I face every day. But what is it, the food? And the, the, you know, the, he probably ate a lot of the uh, fried chicken in there. Probably the pressure from, uh, my, my, first of all, my prayers go out to the spokesman's wife, children, and grandchild. That's number one. The hatefulness coming from the left killed him. The hatefulness of the left killed this man. Rahm Emanuel's petty boycott killed this man, in my opinion. One eight. Does anyone eat? Has anyone ever eaten Chick Fil A? I don't know what it is. Is it a chain only in Chicago? Can they now roll out across America with the publicity? Certainly not in San Francisco. Chick Fil A would be banned in San Francisco. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, let's not make any dirty jokes here. But the Chick Fil A cannot come to San Francisco. Went to church with chicken. I knew I'd get chicken callers. No, there's no Olympic callers. I'm in a very, I'm in a bizarre mood. I'm in a bizarre mood because here I go again. I had a fly to New York two weeks ago. Why? Well, I didn't have to. The family went. I had to go three days. Okay? So I, they know I hate traveling. You know, it's a family story. He doesn't go anywhere. Leave him alone. I'm going again on an airplane tomorrow. Again, so I'm a little bizarre because I don't particularly like flying. It's not fear of flying. It's the upset, leaving the dog. I, I missed the dog already in advance. I feel like something was ripped out of my heart before I'm even gone. Do you ever get that feeling that it's called Welschmerz in, Welschmerz in German, and it's a feeling of overwhelming loss, even though there's no loss. It's like a sadness. Every time I go on a trip, I get sad before I leave. Why? It's like closets full of clothing I don't even wear. I miss it already. No, it's, it's a funny thing. Like I walk around my house, a little house, right? I see all these pants and shirts pregnant with expectation, all neatly pressed, hanging from hangers. I know I'm never going to wear most of them. I wear the same clothing almost every day, and then I switch and wash it and wear another. I don't, I don't get dressed up. I'm not Donald Trump. I'm not a, a tie and suit kind of guy. I, I hang up on myself, but the thing is, just leaving my clothing in the closet disturbs me. I have a lot of trouble packing because I don't know what to take and what to leave. So you have a choice, either leave everything and take nothing, well, then you start saying, well, what should I leave? I don't know what I'm going to do there. So I take a bathing suit and a short. I wind up wearing, I wind up wearing one short sleeve shirt and one pair of pants and a hat. And I change, and that's about it. I'm going to go surfing again is what I'm going to do. But it's too hot to surf. The water's 87 degrees now in the ocean of Florida. And I'm going there. Would you believe it? Why? Family wants to go there. I'm going. I don't like being alone. Horrible. There's a limit to how much you can be alone. I'm going to sit here and what, click the channels at night, and there's going to be another Olympics screaming. Uh, I, I don't want to see it anymore. Who's watching the Olympics and why? Why does anyone watch that? Why does anybody watch the Olympics? I don't understand. You haven't seen enough Olympics for the rest of your life? How many shot puts can you see? How many times can you see them getting excited over this? Why do people like this kind of stuff? All right, I admit I'm not a normal person in that regard. I'm not an average normal sports nut. There are people who are intelligent, I understand. There are people who I understand graduated the 7th, 8th grade even who watch sports. Some even allegedly went to high school and they still watch sports. I don't understand it myself, but look, I, I accept it. It's a big world, 5, 6 billion people by now, and a lot of them seem to get excited by it. It's mainly kind of a third world thing. I would, th honest to God, I think that the lower your education, the higher your interest in sports. I, I, don't, I haven't done an actual study. Is that sacrilegious that I insult a few million people by accident just now? Yeah, I didn't mean to. It's absolutely not intended. But let me explain the business I'm in. Let me explain the thin line I'm in. I read you the headlines, didn't I? Chick-fil-A spokesman dies suddenly because of the pressure that they were put on by Rahm Emanuel, right? 
Then I read you some other stories that are, that are hard to believe. Muslims are, are claiming crosses at Catholic University violate their human rights. The Air Force removes God from the logo. School removes God from a song. Anti-bullying speaker curses Christian teens. Elderly woman told she can't fly American flags. So the business I am in is such that the minute I say hello, I, I alienate half the audience. 50% of the people listen to the show waiting to be insulted. The other 50% like me an awful lot. So whatever I say will attract tremendous reactions, both pro and con. That's the thin line that I walk on. So isn't that what free speech is all about? How many times have I told you that the entire intent of free speech is to, in other words, if you're not saying something that agitates people, then you may as well not say it at all. Then you're not really speaking your mind. You're being polite, which is okay. It's okay to be polite. But if you're in the area of commentary, which I'm in, if you are not getting people angry, some people angry, then what's the point of being in the area of commentary? Then you're not, you're not using the First Amendment. The First Amendment was made, made to protect speech that agitates people. Don't you understand that? That free speech means that speech will, by definition, agitate some people who don't agree with you, and that's what the First Amendment is for? I'm trying to educate America. It's almost impossible with the, the dumbness out there. The morons who sit in a movie theater with 3D glasses inside their head, born with 3D glasses behind their, their retinas, born to sit in the seat and listen to what uh, the garbage that's put out by the, those who manufacture the sewage, just born. So if I say things that please some and offend others, I'm exercising my First Amendment right. Isn't that correct? Do I have to remind you that if people are offended by anything that they hear, that's too, da too darn bad? That we live in a free country. We don't live in the ex-Soviet Union. We don't live in North Korea where you get shot for insulting the president. Or is that the country you would like to live in? If so, then I suggest you uh, become a member of MSNBC's new stormtroopers because obviously MSNBC believes in no free speech. They never have anybody on who disagrees with them. Look what happened to CNN today. You didn't even hear about that? They fired the president. Why did they do it late on a Friday afternoon? Because most morons who are watching or media watchers already, their mind is on some girl in a, in a pair of shorts running in, the, in London. You're crazy. They fired the head of CNN. Why they fire him? They're so biased to the left that no one watches the channel anymore. Nobody watches it. Nobody to speak of. I'll be right back. Savage. <laughs> 